So here I am at Royden. That was one of the nicest station cafes I've ever seen anywhere. Interesting that it says Royden, Essex, because I think most of this walk today is going to be in Hertfordshire. Wow, how romantic is this? The overgrown entrance to what must have once been a stately home with the two derelict great gatehouses here. So this is my footpath. into unknown territory. Look at this, this is what I was craving today. So I've been planning a walk around the Royal Docks for a few weeks since I went to Comic Con with my sons the other week. And um, I was gonna do it today. But I just had, it was such a beautiful morning. I thought I have gotta get out into the countryside. And it's, uh, it's half past three now. And I finally made it here. And I just, the minute I saw this walk, on the map, I had to come out here. I've been looking at this for a while, for about, I don't know, about at least three years, maybe three and a half years. And it kind of loops around other walks that I've done, but I haven't done any of this until I get right around near uh, where. So I'm up the Lee Valley, and I do love coming out here so much. Uh, it's so restorative. And this is actually uh, part of a long distance path called, the, I think it's the uh, Hakamlo Way, I think it's called. It started, I think it was uh, devised in the 70s. And uh, it's, it's a quite a long walk, I think it's a good 140 odd miles. I think it's partly because I was watching the uh, um, Detectorists last night, the uh, wonderful Mackenzie Crook sitcom, which is on the iPlayer. I highly recommend it if you enjoy these videos. What a wonderful bit of TV that is. It's basically about a group of uh, metal detectorists in North Essex and it's just such lovely shots of the fields in the summertime. So these guys are out there with their metal detectors and it's just such a beautiful piece of landscape filmmaking actually, aside from being a TV comedy show. Just a pheasant and a big rabbit under this tree. I wonder if they were like having a little chat together, maybe a little game of chess, interspecial chess tournament under the tree. Well, this is one of those really overgrown footpaths for stinging nettles. And this is why I always wear long trousers when I come for walks. In the countryside, particularly, protect my legs against this. Oh well, wish me luck. Now I know why no one comes down here. Look, it's Trifford country. I have never seen. Look at that. That cow parsley is huge. At least I think it's cow parsley. That's not giant hogweed, is it? Look at that. That is the mother of all cow parsley. I mean, look at this beast here, all drooping over, the bulbous head down here. Look, I'll put my hand on it, see how big it is, look how thick that stem is. This is like the land that time forgot on the Hertfordshire-Essex border. <laughs> what I love about this, on the train from uh, Stratford, mega city Stratford, this is half an hour. So it takes about the same amount of time to get from door to door for me here as it would be to get to say, I don't know, Brixton or, or um, Kensington or Knightsbridge. This is part of the same sort of uh, ecosystem. You know, we're connected by the river, the River Lee. This is uh, the Lee Valley culture. Basically, it feels like you've come out on someone's lawn. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. This is the footpath though, so... It's 
going to walk up this lane here. It looks fairly peaceful and quiet, doesn't it? And then find the footpath on the far side just around that bend. Here we go. Technically a public bridleway. Lots of rabbits. I can see them running around the trees there. They have to make their burrows in this kind of bank. The A414. Thunders overhead. And you go through that little underpass there. And on my merry way. Well, I have to say, the footpath so far are really well marked compared to a lot of places in Essex where you walk. Wonderful field of young green corn waiting to be uh, bronzed in the sun. Let's hope we get some, eh? This will be a glorious sight at the end of summer. Seeing that little play making its way over the fields here reminds me that we're now into the territory of Stansted Abbots, really. We're getting close to there. And that plane was flying to where they used to be on the run. There was a World War II airfield out near Sawbridgeworth, RAF Sawbridgeworth, during the Second World War, and the planes flew over this way. Um, it's possible, I suppose, there still might be an airfield there. I'm not sure it's Sawbridgeworth, but I did read account of a American Mustang aircraft crashing in the woods uh, not far from here at the end of the war, coming back from a bombing run on the continent, going back to Sawbridgeworth. The pylons are different in Hertfordshire. You noticed uh, the Lee Valley pylons, although we are in the Lee Valley, the ones at the bottom of the valley, they don't have those arms, do they? Here we have a, a junction in the fields. As much as I'd like to keep going on straight on this track, I think the better route to take is this one here. And then I'll loop around the edge of that field, I think. You never know, of course, with my map reading, but. Crop sprayer. I very nearly ran over my camera when I was filming that shot of me walking along this track. I had to run back and grab it quickly. So you can see we're at that, just on there, see that right angle path there? And the uh, Square Spring, that's where we are now, I think. I think Square Spring is behind that hedge. This is really glorious countryside here. Look. Oh, in case you were thinking, his map really's got better. This is actually called Long Spring here. Square Spring is, Square Spring is a little bit further north. That's where I'll be going next. So I must have turned off that track earlier than I thought. It's really in about the last four years that I've started to walk up the Lee Valley more often. It really, it's really got into me. So much so that it's really found its way into my writing, sort of against, initially against my judgement, but then I started to see lots of connections. So that, I think, is the square spring there, that wood. And that's where I'm going to go next. I mean, I could go any other way, really. I'll come out on the road, no matter what. But I think those buildings you can see there beneath the pylon, obviously not beneath the pylon, that's perspective. This isn't on the dead. Uh, I think that's Harlow, or the edge of Harlow. I think before, <laughs> one of the things that I loved about uh, urban walking and didn't really like so much about country walking was that, um, 
sometimes you know you'd walk a whole few fields and there wouldn't really be many changing features and I love the fact that in the city every footstep could potentially throw up something completely new and unexpected or something to learn about and I found that and I still find that actually incredibly stimulating and that is still one of the amazing things about walking in London but actually <laughs> the the fact that you can walk long distances through this kind of beautiful kind of slightly unchanging landscape or you know varying landscape is actually one of the appeals of country walking for me now. You just relax into it and just go give yourself over to the walk and not really think too much about anything really. <laughs> just let your mind drift, you know. So the footpath comes off a little bit earlier than it is in my map. My map's hmm, a good 15 years old. This public right of way has been diverted by statutory order. Please follow the way marks. Absolutely. Lots of little brown rabbits running around in this crop here. A more glorious countryside. I think uh, I'm going to be walking along that ridge of uh, trees there. If I've, uh, unless I've made a terrible mistake, which is not impossible. This is a very rich and storied landscape, really littered with archaeology, moats, earthworks, burial mounds. I think it's one of the reasons that I, uh, I'm so drawn out here and I love it so much. Interesting, walking through this field of crops, which I think is potato. I think I've learnt from experience, covered in black fly, that often indicates potato, although beans are often covered in black fly as well, but these, I think this is potato for sure. To be honest with you, I'd be, uh, I'd be lost actually without my phone to tell me which way to go because we got here. I thought I would just carry straight on and there is no footpath leading straight on. And the map just shows it as a straight footpath, straight to Moat Wood. In reality, you've got to go around the edge of the field and then I think the footpath goes that way. So, people have commented before saying that I should uh, not be so dependent on my phone. Also, actually, people did give me the advice of using the Ordnance Survey app in the first place. Yeah, combination, map and phone. Yeah, and the signposts there. Pointing the way, the wayfinders. Straight ahead to Moat Wood. I wonder if we'll find the moat. It's quite exciting, isn't it? So I think, according to the map, that bit of the wood there you can see sticking out. This is Moat Wood. I think that bit there is the, is the moat in Moat Wood. Just to see if we can see anything there. My guess is that it'll be in you know, a medieval, like a fortified, a defended uh, farmhouse. There are a number of them in this part of the world. It's just glorious to be out here. Coming up to six o'clock, entering early evening, coming up to midsummer. It's the 10th of June today. There are a few finer things in life than this, that's for sure. And it's free. So here it is, here's the moat in Moat Wood and I guess that raised area over there that must have been where the, uh, the farmhouse was or the manor house or whatever was there could have been a different type of fortification. Wonderful, eh? It's great that we have these, these relics of the past just sat here in the landscape. <laughs> in a wood by the edge of a field. This little remnant of the, uh, of the Middle Ages. And 
this is the edge of Moatwood. I'm squashed up on the tube tomorrow morning. This is what I'll be thinking about. <laughs> Just mentally take myself back here. Someone just came along this track here on their bike and that's the first person that I've seen since I left Royden Station about uh, just under three hours ago. There's nobody out here at all. It's delightful. But there are lots of rabbits, lots of squirrels and loads of pheasants. Starting now to loop around the back of uh, East Nine Wood, Stansted Abbots, ancient, ancient storied landscape here, turning into the Lee Valley now. Really wonderful stuff, and hopefully we shall cross the River Ash up here somewhere. There's something really special when you get to um, walk a landscape that you've seen in the distance from other walks. You think, oh, I'll walk there one day. And then when you finally do it, it's, uh, it's lovely, because you know, you're connecting together things. And I've seen this from various, you know, the bit near Royden Station, I, I walk, I've walked down and ended a walk at Royden. And I could see the field stretching up on the far side and thought, oh, I'd love to go there. Likewise, when I did the Stort Navigation walk. And here I did a walk, I haven't made a video of it, but I did a walk up to East Nye and then round down Whitbury Hill into where I saw these fields. I thought, oh, I'd love to walk that one summer. That was, that was uh, just before Christmas one year, about three years ago. I think there's a future walk through there, out along the River Ash. So this here, I think, is an old disused railway line. I walked along it further along where it's a lot more obviously a railway line, but this appears to be it according to the map. But the route we're gonna take is along here, across this field, then over the River Ash, and then around, skirt around, uh, and come into the edge of where. Where, you say? Where? I had that conversation once. Fantastic little wooden bridge over the river ash on a June evening. What more can you want? So this track now, I think it has a big loop up and around. It comes out, I think the edge of where is somewhere on the other side of that field. See the houses on the edge of Ware across this field. Breaking now the solitude of the fields. The beautiful solitude of the fields, I should say. Just over there, we can see those buildings. I put my finger here, those buildings there. That's more or less on the site of Whitbury Hill Fort, which I think was built by the Danes. A powerful position overlooking the River Lee. That's where I went that day, three years ago. So it feels like the, the walk should end in Ware rather than push on to Hartford. That feels like it would be over-egging the pudding slightly. If this is the end of the walk down here, thank you so much for coming with me. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful walk. I'm so glad I just took that urge and ran with it. I felt like I was absconding, which is a wonderful feeling. <laughs> and I'll see you on the next one. The next one probably will be the Royal Docks, I think, unless something props up. Here we go. In the ancient town of Ware. <laughs>